Good evening, and welcome back to 31 Horror Nights. It's October 28th, and tonight's classic is The Shining. If The Exorcist is, like, the most highly regarded horror movie ever made, at least by the general public, The Shining probably comes in a close second. This movie has some very iconic performances, scares, ideas, and while it wasn't that critically praised as released, in fact it was nominated for a couple Razzie Awards, since then it's gotten the reputation as one of the scariest and best horror movies ever made. Directed by Stanley Kubrick, who's also directed 2001 A Space Odyssey, A Clockwork Orange, Doctor Strangelove, and Eyes Wide Shut, The Shining is an adaptation of Stephen King's book of the same name, although... I'm not going to say it's a really loose adaptation, but they definitely took some creative liberties while making this into a movie. I have read the book. In fact, I read it before I ever saw this movie, even though I have seen this movie before I ever started doing 31 Horror Nights. And I do think that the book is better, although the movie is very good in its own right. I'm giving The Shining a 7 out of 10. As a standalone movie, it's pretty good, but as an adaptation, I find it wanting. It's kind of hard for me to separate it because I really did love the book. The plot of The Shining is that there's this family of three that are going to be spending the entire winter in this hotel up in Colorado, like very secluded. It's called the Overlook Hotel. There are supernatural things happening in the Overlook, which is pretty bad because the son, Danny, has psychic powers and all this eventually leads to the dad, Jack, to go crazy. While most of the basics are taken from the original story, most of the most iconic scares of The Shining were made up for the movie and weren't in the book at all. The two little girls, the all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, and of course, here's Johnny, which from what I heard wasn't even in the original script, it was something that Jack ad-libbed. Speaking of which, Jack Nicholson's performance as Jack Torrance in this movie is iconic and somewhat legendary at this point, and for a good reason. He is very, very good at acting completely psychotic. Almost too good if you ask me. One of the biggest things in the original novel is that it starts out as a happy, though definitely flawed family with an ex-alcoholic father and like the mother and the son, but they're all still like a very tightly knit group and they love each other very much, but going to this hotel and having all this stuff affecting Danny and Jack, it sort of like splits the family apart and makes Jack sort of get like pushed away from his family and it's definitely sad there's tragedy to it you see jack struggle in his fight against the hotel but he ends up losing and goes crazy there's pretty much none of that in the movie as good as jack nicholson was when he was playing the axe murderer he really did not play the normal loving dad very well i did not buy the chemistry between him and shelly duvall as wendy even for a moment and I just didn't really get the impression that this was a happy marriage or a happy family at all. What I find kind of funny is that they spend so much of the first act having characters just lay out a bunch of exposition, but they spend almost none of it establishing the dynamic of these three people as a family. I mean, I guess I kind of bought Shelley Duvall and the kid, you know, as a mother-son type of thing, but when it comes to Jack Nicholson's performance, or at least the way that that character was written, it didn't really have any sort of the happy family and therefore none of the tragedy that the book had. The book also made Jack's descent into insanity very, very gradual. In this movie, it's pretty much like a switch that gets flipped. I mean, they like flick it on and off randomly a little bit, but it's not gradual at all. The other day I was talking with a friend about how horror movies are actually a lot harder to make than horror in like novels or like a TV series because you need a lot of time in order to build up both like good characters and a good setting as well as good horror. In order to make a good horror movie, you either have to make the horror so clever that you can ignore the fact that it's sort of lacking in the character department, like the original The Conjuring or Hell House LLC, or do it in a really good way and manage to both develop the characters and set up some good horror, like The Conjuring 2 or The Haunting. In The Haunting, there was a lot more of an effort for the audience to actually get into the main character's head. I would have liked if there were some like voiceovers or like hearing Jack's thoughts throughout the movie because that's what a lot of the book was. And you watch his slow descent into insanity and giving himself to the spirits of the Overlook Hotel. Yes, I know that this movie is two and a half hours long and if they added more stuff, it would just be a little bit too long for most people. But even so, I still feel like they could have used their two and a half hours a little bit better when it comes to establishing and developing the characters. But they didn't do that. Instead, decided to focus more on sort of developing the atmosphere, which I will say is very good in this movie. And when we actually get to the final night where Jack Nicholson goes insane, it's done very well. Jack's performance is obviously very good. And while a lot of people give Shelley Duvall crap for her performance as Wendy, I think she did pretty well too. 
Most of my problems with The Shining mostly just come from the fact that I've read that I read the book before I ever saw the movie. I feel like if I had never read the book, I would have thought this was really good. And if you sort of separate from the book, it is done very well. It's very well paced, has a good atmosphere, good acting, and a lot of great ideas as a horror movie. But I still don't think it's as good a movie as the original novel is as a book. That's not to say there aren't any problems in this movie. A lot of the stuff, it's sort of like The Exorcist, where they are throwing everything they have in order to scare the audience. But just like in The Exorcist, there are a few moments where it goes a little bit too far and sort of verges into that campy, silly territory, especially towards the very end where you got Jack Nicholson groaning like a zombie. Still, all things considered, it is a pretty good movie. Once again, I feel like a broken record, but bears repeating, I liked the book a lot more, but as a film, The Shining is pretty good. It definitely has its flaws, but it did so much more right than it did wrong. Okay, now let's go into a few spoilers, even though, again, like a lot of the other movies, I don't know who exactly I'm spoiling this movie for. Things get so bad at one point that Danny uses his psychic powers to send out a signal to the person who used to be the cook, or at least the cook while the um, hotel was open, Dick Holloran, who also has psychic powers and tells Danny about it and they have a little conversation on the last day before he has to leave. And Holloran tries to get there, and of course there's like a giant blizzard and the phones are down, so he has to like take a snowmobile up there. And for some reason the Overlook really, really doesn't like this, so it tells Jack to basically kill his wife and kid, and Dick for that matter. But also, one of the things, I know, I, I know that I'm saying this over and over, but in the book, there was a lot more of a reason why Jack was so willing to just throw himself into this because throughout a lot of his life, he's felt like a screw up. He's been an alcoholic. He's accidentally seriously injured his son before while he was drunk. He's had a bunch of other stuff happen and he sees this as him finally being wanted, him finally having people want him. It's a lot like the haunting in that regard, but in this one, it just, that sort of just glanced over. The final scene of The Shining, after, you know, the all work and no play, after the river of blood, after the here's Johnny scene, is Danny trying to run into the nearby hedge mage, which is one of the biggest features of the Overlook in this movie. And he goes in, and since it's snowing, Jack can very easily follow him using his footprints, but Danny actually does something very clever, which is, like, stepping backwards, back into his footprints once he's in this big, like, clearing place in the middle of the maze, and he, like, runs off while wiping away his footprints, so it looks like his prints just stop. And while Jack is like limping around, groaning out his name, he gets up and uses his tracks to get out of the maze. And Jack stays in the maze while the other two like leave and he ends up freezing to death. And the last shot of the movie is zooming in on this black and white portrait of something that happened decades prior. And then you see Jack in the picture, implying that he's one of the spirits of the Overlook now. This is different from the book where he does manage to, at the very end at least, sort of fight against the spirits of the Overlook, but unlike a lot of the other changes, I don't think that this was that bad of a difference. As a movie, I do think that The Shining is very good, but I still feel that there's like still a possibility of a really, really good movie adaptation of the original novel, one that sort of has the character development as well as some of the really good horror from this movie. But until then, we still got this movie and the original novel, both of which are very good. All right, I'll see y'all tomorrow.